Hi, I'm Steve-O and this is Jen. We're digital nomads who travel the world. Today, we're gonna tell you about the best things to do in Rome. Now we are heading into town to go to the Pantheon and we're doing a city walking tour. When you're taking the subway here in Rome, you just get a ticket. You don't really get, you don't tell them where you're going. You get a ticket that is good for anywhere in the city. Um, and those are a one euro 50 each and they're good for a hundred minutes after you buy them. So you can go on as many rides as you want for a hundred minutes. They're also good for the tram and the bus. So you can ride any of the public transport here in Rome with one ticket. Beat the crowds. Good tickets. Thank so you again, get your guide. Oh my God. Wow. It is so much more crowded here than we could have predicted. Reserve a spot in the Pantheon. <laughs> yeah, definitely do. The Roman Pantheon was built in 114 AD and is one of the best preserved ancient Roman buildings because it has been in constant use for nearly two millennia. The term Pantheon means a temple dedicated to all of the gods, though historians aren't sure that's what the Pantheon was actually used for, but around 609 AD the Pantheon became a Catholic church and dedicated to only one god. Boring! The Pantheon is still an active church. You can go to a mass here or even get married. The dome of the Pantheon is a sight to behold and a marvel of engineering. The 142-foot dome still holds the world record for the largest unreinforced concrete dome. Wow! There are monuments to famous dead people all over the room, including Raphael, the painter, not the Ninja Turtle, and two Italian kings. We arrived at the Pantheon and it is incredibly crowded here. Uh, it said that there were no more reservations for today. Today is Sunday. Um, Saturday, Sunday, and holidays you need a reservation. And we purchased our audio guide from Get Your Guide and it said it wasn't technically a reservation, but it did manage to get us in and we skipped the line, so that was pretty cool. Um, but we did still have to wait in quite a long line inside the Pantheon to collect the audio guide. That probably took about... 15 minutes? Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. But um, you need 35 minutes to run through the entire audio guide once you're inside the Pantheon. So I would say like give yourself at least an hour. It's not very big. It's one big ass room. So you can see the whole thing <laughs> in one lap. But the audio guide is very helpful. Yeah, very detailed and really worth having. So I'm glad that we had booked that ahead because it, even though it wasn't supposed to, it helped us skip the line. So that was definitely useful because otherwise I think we would still be waiting in that line. We just flashed our Get Your Guide ticket and the guy just let us go straight in. We wouldn't have got in. No, we wouldn't have. We wouldn't even be able to go today if yeah. we didn't have that ticket. We need to boogie because we got to get to our walking tour, which we're going to go see all the other cool stuff in Rome. <laughs> we booked this tour with Rome Free Walking Tours. Our tour guide is from Rome. So that means it's going to be good, right? Yeah, that helps a lot. She's also an official tour guide. Now the goal will be not to lose her in these crowds. Oh my god. She's got beautiful bright red hair, so that She's should be helpful. Yeah. Built between 1723 and 1725, the Spanish Steps get their name from the Spanish Embassy to the Vatican in the Piazza di Spagna. The 135 steps link the Piazza Trinita de Monti and the Trinita de Monti Church to the Piazza di Spagna below. The Spanish Steps were built in Italy by Italians and paid for by a dead Frenchman. That has to be one of the most European sentences ever. In the Piazza di Spagna, you'll find the Fontana della Barcaccia, or Fountain of the Boat. Fed by an ancient Roman aqueduct, the fountain was built in 1627 to 1629 after, according to legend, Pope Urban VIII saw a boat stuck in the piazza after a flood from the Tiber River and thought that would make for a cool fountain. The Trevi Fountain! Wow! The Trevi Fountain's name comes from the Latin word trivium, which means the intersection of three streets, which also means that the fountain gets a lot of foot traffic. The Baroque Fountain stands 26 meters high and 49 meters wide, and we were barely able to see the actual fountain over the mass of people trying to get a picture. Built between 1732 to 1762, the fountain is fed by a still-functioning ancient Roman aqueduct. Like every fountain, it is considered good luck to throw coins in, specifically using your right hand over your left shoulder, 
which people do to the tune of an estimated 3,000 euros a day. Our guide told us one coin means you'll come back to Rome, two coins means you're going to find an Italian boyfriend or girlfriend, and three coins means you're going to marry them. Today, all of the coins in the fountain get donated to a charity. Something cool about Rome is that there are lots of free drinking fountains all over the city. Actually, you see them all over Italy as well. The Victor Emmanuel II Monument is a massive structure in the center of Rome that serves many functions, including housing the Italian tomb of the unknown soldier. However, its main purpose is to honor the first king of a unified Italy, Victor Emmanuel II. He's the guy on the horse. Built between 1885 and 1935 and borrowing heavily from classical Roman aesthetics, the monument was built to resemble an ancient Roman forum and fits in well with the general vibe of the surrounding area, especially the nearby ancient Roman forum. What are you shaking your head about? I said it was this, it was in great shape until 1605 when the Pope was like, let's knock this bitch down and stick all the marble. Those Popes, man, they knocked a lot of this stuff over. Yeah, yeah. They tore down this place. Now there's pigeons just sitting on it. Fucking Pope, man. I blame the Pope. She just collapsed in the street. Probably unrelated. <laughs> We just finished the walking tour and walked around some of the archaeological sites that are everywhere here in Roma. Roma is really just an open air museum. It's so incredible. Our tour guide, who was very, very knowledgeable and very helpful, told us uh, that we were near a lot of different parts of the city. So right now we are in the Jewish quarter. And she told us about a couple of restaurants here that do a Roman Jewish cuisine fusion. Nana better than Nana better. <laughs> Next to that. So it says on the show. We're here inside Nuovo Mercado Escalino. I apologize for my pronunciation. Escalino. Escalino. Nuovo Mercado Escalino. Perfect to tell. Our friend Vincent told us we should check this place out. It's a local market here in Rome and it has food from all around the world. You can find lots of spices. Dishes. Um, so many vegetables. It's a fresh market, mostly. So uh, I'd highly recommend here if you want to see a place where locals shop, and I think a lot of restaurants shop here as well. If I were a restaurant, I'd shop here. Yeah, seems good. Price but I'm is just reasonable. Steve. You're my restaurant. So many noodles. Fill up the big bucket and 350 to fill up, uh, I guess, a liter. That's incredible. This is so cool. It's a more local experience to have, but if you're looking for that, then this is definitely something you should put on your list. And it's very close to the train station, so if you're in that neighborhood, you could pop over. You don't have all your stuff with you. The Roma Termini station. Of course, one of the best things to do in Rome is eat. Today, we're going to take you to a very authentic Roman food experience. 
Chinese food. This was our third week in Italy, and this was our first non-Italian meal. It was so good. Gelateria Fossi is the oldest gelato factory in Rome. We ate there at least three times. If you're looking for classic Roman dishes, try Trattoria Morgana. It's a pretty small place and very popular, so you might need to make a reservation. That's a good amount of wine. Yeah, it's perfect. Super lunch. There are so many amazing restaurants to try in Rome. We made another video entirely about food in Rome that you can check out here. So most of what we've been doing this trip has been kind of scheduled and planned because we wanted to fit certain activities in. But if you have the room in your itinerary to have a day where you're just kind of wandering and free or at least a few hours here and there where you can do that, we'd highly recommend it because it's just a great city to get lost in. After lunch, we said to ourselves, you know what would be a truly authentic Italian experience is seeing the Super Mario Brothers movie. And on our way there, we walked past Palazzo Bernini, and we thought, okay, that's a cool little park. We can come back to that after the movie. We had brought movie chocolate to the movie, and I guess without noticing, at some point during the movie, I spilled a piece of chocolate on my lap. So after the movie, we came into the park, and I looked down and realized I had chocolate all over the front of my pants. It looked like I pooped the front of my pants, like Which is bad. Which very impressive. <laughs> yes. And so I thought, okay, this museum must have a bathroom. So I went in to use the bathroom and there was a guy who worked there handing out free tickets to the museum. So I went and grabbed Steve-O, ran to the bathroom, cleaned up my pants, and then we went into the museum. We were probably there for an hour, an I hour and a half. Completely unexpected. There was this incredible part um, where the ceiling had frescoes all over it and they actually had lounge chairs where you could sit and just stare up at the ceiling. We did that for probably, I would say, 45 minutes. I remember thinking when we were in the Sistine Chapel, that it'll be really nice to be able to like just lie down and look up at it. Mm. And this palazzo had that exact Genius. setup. Oh my yeah. God. I, that was probably one of the cooler things we've ever done in a museum. The point of this is all to say that if you can fit some wandering time and some unexpected adventuring into your plans, you know, things just have a way of working out. So. Go adventure, go explore in Rome, uh, wander and get lost, and you never know what, where your day might end up. Um, but we do know where we're headed right now. It's pizza. It's pizza. Hooray! Yeah. This is Roman style pizza. It's sold by the slice, and it is the best. We have pesto, ham, and burrata. And I think she said it has eggplant too. Oh, no, so that's fine. here at the Colosseum. We are going on a walking tour of the Colosseum, the Forum, and the Palatine Hills. We have this tour through a company called City Walkers, but we actually booked it through Get Your Guide. Um, that made it really easy for us, and we are in the Blue Group. Team Blue! And we have headsets, so we'll be able to hear the guide. And there's only one earphone, so we're like foreign dignitaries. Yeah, it should be fun. We've never done a tour like this with the audio set, so we'll let you know how it goes. Um, we're really looking forward to seeing all these places and learning more about them. No trip to Rome would be complete without seeing the Colosseum. Luckily, it's really big, so you can't miss it. When construction was completed in 80 AD under the Emperor Titus, spectators could come to watch many different shows throughout the day, starting in the morning with the animal entertainment. Animals from all over the Roman Empire, bulls, elephants, bears, wild boars, rhinos, basically anything big and scary, would either tear each other apart to entertain the masses or be killed in mock hunts. There were also the requisite gladiator fights, executions, and even naval battles. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the Colosseum was abandoned and left to rot. Over the centuries, the marble and metals of the arena were taken to rebuild parts of Rome. You could see the pockmarks where the iron clamps were stripped away. Today, the Colosseum brings in millions of tourists a year, like us. Roman Forum was the center of day-to-day -day life in ancient Rome. 
It was the seat of government, a meeting place, religious center, and the center of commerce. Originally a mosquito-infested marsh, the land was drained by one of the world's first sewage systems, the Cloaca Maxima, which is still in use today. However, after the fall of the Roman Empire, the Cloaca Maxima fell into disrepair, and sediment buildup from the surrounding rivers caused the land to rise higher and higher over the centuries. Today, the forum has been dug out of the muck, but you can still see how high the sediment was from this door to nowhere on the back of the Antonius and Faustina Temple. Like everything from the Roman Empire, the area was stripped of its resources by the local people as well as a long list of popes to help build churches and homes. Today, the Forum ruins are still an impressive sight to behold thousands of years later. Thanks for coming around Rome with us. This video only scratches the surface of all there is to do in this incredible city, but we hope it's a great jumping off point for you to plan your trip. If you want to see another video about more stuff to do in Rome, check out this video about Vatican City. And if you want to see more Italy videos, you can check those out right here. Wow. We'll see you in the next video. You better walk that f***ing aqueduct. <laughs> I loved it.